Welcome to you all and thanks for, for joining us. We thought it might be useful just to go through some um, facts about the program and its ambition and its structure and some of the events affiliated with it and uh, maybe speak a little bit about the application process before, before opening out to questions that you might have, whether more specific or, or other aspects that you think are, are important to discuss. Um, so on a very basic level, it's a, a two-year program, very open um, in, in terms of its structure, and that openness is intended to facilitate the possibility of many different ways of, uh, of coming through the program, of using the program to, to suit your own sort of interests and, and aims, like career aims and, and intellectual and research aims. Um, so in the first year, the courses are structured around um, uh, required CCCP colloquia that are taught by Mark and myself. Um, and the remaining coursework is largely electives. And, and we work with students to, to help understand which electives might best suit their, their interests and ambitions. And those electives come both from within GSA, the coursework offered in the history theory part of the curriculum, in the visual studies curriculum and elsewhere. But also our students have often taken courses in other parts of actually both GSAP in terms of planning, preservation, et cetera, but also uh, in other parts of the university. Uh, and then the second year is um, centered on uh, intensive independent research thesis uh, in which students work with, with individual uh, advisors, but also collectively, both through a thesis workshop and through a series of uh, sort of collective program conversations in the form of thesis reviews. Um, and I guess just around the, the coursework, students also take uh, one or possibly two sort of elective courses in the in the both semesters of the of the thesis year. Um, Mark, what else should we say about the coursework actually before we move on to oh you're still muted, I think. Sorry, I'll try to, there's some noise back here. Construction, <laughs> New York City. Um, the, I'll, I'll just try to uh, add a little bit to that. The one thing to say about the coursework is, as Felicity has pointed out, that the program has an, an open structure for the reasons she's identified, which is mostly to allow students to develop their own particular interests and those interests might be related to courses that are offered within the School of Architecture or they might be else uh, within other programs. Uh, um, and often we will discuss with incoming students which courses they should take in the first year of the program, either to explore what we think are really important um, classes, content or methods or modes of approach to research that will be helpful for CCCP students uh, in their second year and within the program broadly. Or in other cases, we'll help students identify courses in other departments, which might be really useful for the ideas that they are developing for their thesis research. So some students will be thinking about doing research in, I don't know, on um, the history of media projects in Africa. And so we will try to help them identify courses which might allow them to know how to approach a very complicated uh, topic like that. Uh, so just to say that the programs are open. I mean, the, the program allows course selection to be open, but that doesn't mean it's unstructured or you're, or you're just lost within a sea of possibilities. The, those possibilities are there for you to, to um, script and craft a, a path through the program that is most useful to your interests and your research plans. Yeah, no, that's a, um, an excellent way of putting it, Mark. Um, and, and I think you know one of the reasons that the the uh, program offers a lot of flexibility is that people come in from very different backgrounds um, and and have very different sort of career ambitions. So so in addition to something like a um, you know a, a, a geographical framework that might be of interest or even a sort of thematic program that might be 
of interest. Some students are coming straight from under, undergraduate degrees. Other students have been out working as, as curators or as, as editors for a number of years and are, are really returning to school to, to sort of you know, retool their, their uh, sort of intellectual framework or the sort of methods or to expand their framework. And so people are coming in with a, a very broad range of backgrounds, but also um, are, are identifying with one or many of the C's in the in the program's title. So it might well be that somebody is coming into the program to, to think about developing a critical voice as a writer or as an editor or actually in many other frameworks of research or somebody might be coming in to, to frame a, a, a curatorial practice or even an exhibition design practice or to forge new models of research-based thinking and, and, um, uh, and, and work within architecture or even within an affiliated field or related to an affiliated field. And, um, and so the idea is, you know, is not to forge a very singular type of student, maybe with the exception of uh, encouraging a, a sort of attitude towards, towards research and towards understanding how to make a, a contribution to the, the field or fields that you're interested in. But the question of what that field might be, um, often for many students actually remains an open question and they really develop the framework for a future career within the program. So maybe to add that people don't always come in knowing where they want to head, they want to come in to use the program to test out different modes of practice, different, um, you know, again, research frameworks, intellectual frameworks within architecture or uh, adjacent field. Some people even come from very different backgrounds and use the pro program as a way to actually get a foothold within architecture to learn about its, um, uh, you know, its concerns, its possibilities, its uh, possible futures. And so there's many, again, many different, um, um, many different sort of streams of students coming through the program. Some are coming in to, to go on to do uh, an academic PhD in architectural history and theory. Others have very little interest in a more academic career and are very, very interested in forging alternative modes of practice within the field of architecture. And so, so this is the, the idea um, of, the, of the open framework within which as Mark rightfully pointed out, there is indeed a certain amount of curating um, both on behalf of the students and, and through conversations with us as directors or possibly even with, um, um, with the cohort above them, with people that have gone through the program and, and, uh, and develop the best way for, the, for them to, 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 to use this flexibility. And the thesis year, you know, again, is an opportunity to develop not only a, a dense, rigorous piece of, um, uh, of research work, um, but to think through um, um, how to, to, to understand that as helping launch people in a particular career path, which is not to say, you know, has to be a curatorial project if you want to be a curator, but to say that it's an opportunity also to, to really focus on a body of work in a, a structure of feedback and conversation and, uh, and, and with, you know, close dialogue with, with both your colleagues and uh, an advisor. So to really develop a piece of work uh, to, a, to a significant level. And, and this, of course, is enormously important in terms of um, uh, presenting the sort of voice that you tend to have in, in moving forward. So let's see, what else can we discuss? Um, I, can, I can just add a little bit more to that, Felicity, because I, I think it's, a, at least from our perspective, and I think from most of our students' perspective, it's important to understand that relationship between the relatively open structure of the program that allows students to develop their own self-directed form of research and to think through the program what type of practice they want to establish uh, by the time they leave and the role of the thesis because in many ways we can think of the structure of the first year as a way in which students gain familiarity and expertise in forms of working and in the second year they get to deploy that in their thesis and and, and the hope is not only that by the time they finish their thesis, they have developed an incredibly strong and rigorous and originally researched project, 
Um, but a few other things that I guess the second thing that's important and we see all the time is that students leave with a remarkable confidence in their ability to do that research and to be able to use that research toward a practice that exists in the world or, or within academia. And so it, it's not just that it's an original piece of research, it's a piece of research that allows you to establish a voice within the discipline and within the public institutions and public spaces of communication and public fora for the uh, way in which we present that work um, to the world. And, and, and I think it's an, really helpful to understand that that's one of the objectives and aims of the program. And maybe that's a good segue also to, um, to just speak briefly to some of the career paths that you know have been forged coming out of the program. Again, they're enormously heterogeneous. Some people have gone on to, uh, to become teachers in architecture schools and elsewhere. Um, others have gone on to, to become curators or institute directors or uh, to forge their own sort of research-based modes of practice. And I'm thinking, for instance, of Jose Esparza, who's now the executive director and chief curator at the storefront for art and architecture here in New York. And actually we're um, uh, collaborating on an event in a couple of weeks where Jose is going to you know, take the students or us and the students through an exhibition on the occasion of the 40th anniversary at the founding of Storefront. Or we think of uh, Carlos Minguez, who's a, a curator at Arctes in, in Stockholm, um, or the fantastic uh, F. Arc collective, uh, students who developed a, a feminist architectural research collective in a you know, quite unique way, who produce exhibitions and publications and, um, and uh, sort of widely sought after for, for lectures and, and interviews. Um, other students have gone on to, to edit magazines like Pinup or to, um, uh, to found their own galleries in Mexico City. So there's a lot, I don't know, I mean, we could go on and on with where the students have, have headed up. Um, but to say that, uh, you know, when, to a certain degree would, you know, would tailor, tailor your choice of courses um, yeah, in order to, to set yourself up to have the, the, the education and really the opportunity again to develop research that would help in fostering these types of different career paths. A number of people um, have ended up working in architectural offices, but not as designers, of course, as, as the person that runs the research arm or the exhibition arm or the publication arm um, of an architectural office or, other people have gone on to uh, actually forge artistic collectives that have done incredibly well and um, um, in, in Chile and Argentina. So there's lots and lots of sort of potential career paths. Again, I, I mentioned a number of our students have gone on uh, to very successfully gone on to, to become historians. Um, you know, no, I'm forgetting lots of people, Mark, that um, uh, <laughs> you have. That sounds like a that sounds like a pretty good spectrum. The um, I I'm glad you added the historians because a number of our students do use the program to help decide and help prepare them for doctoral studies in uh, America and elsewhere. And many of those many of our students have done that, and they've launched very successful careers. And others have also continued within academia in slightly different modes, not as uh, uh, historians and theorists per se in the professional professional historian sense, but have are working at schools, teaching design and running degree programs and, and doing developing research programs within universities, in a sense, continuing the type of multidisciplinary practice within their own institutions that we pursue within CCCP. Um, yeah, that's a great addition. Actually, a number of students also um, have been running running the publications office in an architecture school. Um, and I'm thinking of Francisco Diaz in, in, in Santiago de Chile, or are running the, the public events and, and exhibition program in their schools. And so I think this is also definitely a, a career path that quite a few of our students have pursued in the wake of in the wake of the degree. I think that's very useful. I also know just to come back to like very, very practical concerns, I, I know a lot of people um, have questions about the application process and what we expect and what the best way to approach things like the application statement or the 
the so-called portfolio? And I think these are good questions because the program, um, you know, is neither a design program. So what does a portfolio look like? I mean, these are good questions, nor is it a, a sort of generic history theory program or, you know, strictly a curatorial program. And, and so we, we um, maybe say a couple of things about what, um, um, uh, you know, how to approach again, how to approach these parts of the, of the application process. And, and with the statement, the statement, you should actually both of these documents, you could see as an opportunity for you to tell us a little bit more about yourself and why you have identified CCCP as a, as a program that, that you think is a good fit for your interests um, uh, and, 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 and sort of ambitions. And, and it's not that we only admit people who have a background in critical or curatorial or you know, conceptual and theoretical work. Obviously, some people are coming in to develop those voices. Uh, but it is important to us that, that you care about, um, about developing one of those types of practices and that you've identified CCCP as a as a, as a means to, to do that. And, and so we're really looking for that statement um, as a way for you to introduce yourself um, and your interests, ambitions. Certainly you can tell us about your background if there's something that, that you think is relevant, but it's just sort of really a, a space to, to, to identify, um, 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 identify how you imagine that the program is, um, um, is you know, it's the right place for you. And, and the portfolio, again, given the fact that people come from many different sort of backgrounds and practices, the portfolios can range from something that might look like a design portfolio if you don't have a body of other types of work, whether that be writing or, or other forms of creative practice or curatorial practice, it can be a studio-based portfolio. But it can also be entirely text-based if you have really been focused on writing, whether short form writing or, or or uh, you know seminar papers, then you can send us an entirely text-based portfolio because really we see that as another channel for you to tell us about your interests, about your um, uh, you know just to sort of as a way to describe um, um, where you've been and what you hope to do. You know, I don't know, Mark. Do you have something to add? That was a no, no. That's strange. I think that's mm -hmm. really helpful to understand how you should approach the application. And, and I'm sure you guys will have questions. And maybe in a minute, we'll turn it over to your questions. But I think it might also be interesting just to say a little bit about where Columbia is, for those of you not from New York. <laughs> one, of the, one of the reasons that the program has been so rich and such a success is because of the brilliant students that we have and because of our great colleagues and because of Columbia University, but also because of New York. Many of our students are interested in the types of cultural institutions that New York has to offer. And so as Felicity mentioned, we're having a conversation with Jose Esparza at Storefront, a, a very um, uh, important uh, institution for the ways we think about experimental research and exhibition practices, not only in New York, but I would say in, in the world and within architecture very broadly. But we also often have conversations with people at other institutions. We um, speak to people at PS1. We've uh, set up conversations with people at the DIA Foundation. We have conversations with the curators at MoMA. And so it's helpful to understand CCCP as surrounded by all of these cultural institutions, a kind of satellite of, of, of spaces where we have ongoing conversations and discussions, which are really helpful forms of encounter and learning, but also a place to meet new people and a place to have conversations about the type of work that you might be wanting to do once you graduate. Um, actually, that's a, and, and, go, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Go, go ahead, Felicity. I was just going to say that's actually a very uh, useful reminder that the, this is the sort of formal part of the pedagogy, but there are also a series of, of workshops where we bring curators or editors or people working in the forms of practice that are you know, identified with CCCP to talk to us, you know, not only as they might talk to a broader public, but really about how they practice, you know, how they got into the type of work they're doing, you know, how they launched a project. And, and so we also 
stage a series of conversations, typically at school, like sometimes we go to other institutions um, to have them tell us about something that is going on at the, at the moment. Um, but sometimes we have people come in and talk through from a very sort of professional um, uh, perspective how they crafted their practice. And we find these conversations very, very useful because to, I mean, of course, the coursework and thesis and the sort of more research-oriented intellectual work that is done in the context of the university is, finds a sort of interesting balance, I think, through, through uh, conversations about more hands-on um, um, practices. And, and we also have a series of frameworks in which the students also launch initiatives. Um, and these have taken the form both of a series of student-run symposia um, uh, uh, around the, the language of CCCP interpretations that have been going for more than a decade. And these are literally student initiatives where students decide whether they're going to host a symposium, you know, how they're going to frame a topic, who they're going to invite, uh, the students uh, run it themselves. And, and so it's it's a really a, a space to, to develop those skills in conversation with your colleagues. And of course us, we do you know, offer, offer, offer guidance and feedback about these initiatives. But these are, I think, very, very important other aspects of, uh, um, uh, of, the, of the training and pedagogy that takes place within the program. Likewise, our students have launched collective um, travel initiatives to uh, events like the Venice Biennale or the Sharjah Architecture Triennial. Um, or uh, produce pop-up exhibitions elsewhere, and so, so these these activities are 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 you know, useful um, in a pedagogical sense, but also in a sort of professionalization sense to to give you the um, you, the skills and voice to to undertake this type of work also uh, upon graduation. So I think just to remember that these are all conceived and framed as both interesting events, but also to have um uh, a larger pedagogical sort of motive so 